At the end of my first year in COA, I took a biology two course with Dr. John Anderson. What stuck in my head the longest was not the exact makeup of the liver or the brain, but the phrase, natural selection works. <laughs> Remember that, do you? <laughs> Which John made us chant at the end of every lecture. <laughs> Even though this phrase uh, made a lot of sense in the context of anatomy and physiology, at the time, the logic of natural selection for me remained uh, confined to these lectures. Simultaneously with biology, I took a philosophy course with Dr. John Wiesfader, in which I came across the concept of self-deception. Self-deception is the active misinterpretation of the reality by the conscious mind. It is the fooling of ourselves by ourselves. A simple personal example is that when the dreaded time comes to decide who is to wash the dishes, I'm convinced uh, th that the sink does not contain a single dirty dish of mine, even though I'm always responsible for the bulk of the pile. <laughs> so uh, during this philosophy course, we discussed what is self-deception and how it happens, but we never really got to the question of why it happens. So after my first year in COA, I did a lot of field work. I saw migrating flocks of sandpipers making acrobatic turns in midair upon approach of a sparrowhawk. I saw minute hummingbirds there this big, squeaking with such ferocity as if they were to take a part in a pro wrestling match. I worked with DNA and felt incredible joy when I detected mutations in genes. I worked with birds and felt incredible frustration because they often outsmarted me. <laughs> These experiences illustrated just how beautiful and complex are the works of evolution through natural selection. I learned to see through the lens of evolutionary biologists, and I loved what I saw. In my third year, I took the evolution course with Dr. Chris Peterson, and I encountered the self-deception again. This time, the question that bugged me was not how, but why. Why do we fool ourselves? What is the evolutionary advantage of self-deception? In our daily lives, what we do and how we do things depends on our social environment. We live in a society that has a beautiful, intricate social structure. We have laws, we have rules, we date, we hate, we are social animals. As much as, much as we are social though, we are also selfish beings, and this I mean in a biological sense. Being selfish in a society, however, is not easy. Hiding and lying about our true intentions is hard. Lying is hard because it is, it's a, it is a process that consumes a lot of biochemical energy. Lies, lying is hard because we have to deal with a lot of conflicting information. We have to think about too many things at the same time. Robert Trivers, an evolutionary biologist, claims that the evolutionary advantage of self-deception is that it reduces the metabolic cost of lying to others, as well as the social cost of being caught at lying. In some ways, it reduces the cost of being selfish. And this is because it is easier to convince others if we first convince ourselves. Self-deception is only one of the ways in which we can reduce the cost of having to think too much, uh, think about too many things at the same time. Another, I think, familiar example is the formation of biases. We form biases because it is easier, biologically easier, to uh, think and conceive solely of our own view rather than considering every possible view simultaneously. So why does this matter at all? Uh, well, first, uh, <laughs> being a geek I am, I, I, I find these things terribly interesting and I talk about them a lot, so you shouldn't be surprised. Second, <laughs> secondly, uh, this means that things like lying to ourselves or forming biases are not solely cultural or philosophical, but also biological phenomena with evolutionary basis. And as human ecologists, as citizens of the modern world, we face a lot of social and environmental problems. These problems can be approached either by treating the symptoms or by addressing the cause. The perspective of evolutionary biology might help us identify the ultimate causes of such fundamental pr properties of the social fabric as the self-deception and bias. And this will enable us to make more informed, complex decisions about the complicated problems. And this is because self-deception and biases are there for a reason. This is because natural selection works. Thank you very much. <laughs>